Hi, I'm Shannon. Hi, Shannon. I'm Dr. Johnson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, I don't know how much you know from my chart, so I just want to tell you my story really quickly. Um, but my doctor has sent me to talk with you about the safest way that my husband and I can get pregnant. So, I'm HIV positive, and my husband is HIV negative, and I was diagnosed with HIV about eight years ago. Um, and it's been a long journey, as you might imagine, but I've really, in the last few years, things have turned out really well for me in life, and I didn't used to think it was possible for me to have a family, mm -hmm. and so I'm excited to have found somebody that I want to have a family with, um, but I want to do it safely. So I've been working with my doctor to make sure that I'm as healthy as possible. My viral load's been undetectable now for several years. My husband is really supportive and has come and met my doctor. Um, I told him I had HIV when we first met and we used condoms the whole time. And um, we still will keep doing that. So my doctor said there's a way that we could try to get pregnant at home mm -hmm. called home insemination. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be completely safe, so there would be no risk of him getting HIV, but that we would still be able to get pregnant. And she said that you would be able to explain to me how we could do that. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming to see me, and congratulations on embarking on this journey. Thank you. Um, that's a really big deal that you're at a place in your life so where exciting. you're excited yeah. and ready and trying to get pregnant and wanting to do it safely. So some things to think about, even before you get to the point of home insemination, are, and it sounds like you're on the appropriate antiretroviral medications, mm -hmm. your viral load is undetectable. Those right. are two really important things to both have a healthy HIV negative baby mm -hmm. and to not have your partner be infected. Uh, you taking prenatal vitamins is also very important. Right. And in addition, not drinking alcohol, not smoking cigarettes, and not taking any drugs that could potentially be dangerous to the baby. Right. This is similar to what my doctor told me. So I started the prenatal vitamins last month, um, and then right, I I see her regularly to get my HIV um, checked. With unprotected sex, there is a very small risk of your partner getting HIV, especially if you're undetectable. But with home insemination methods, there's zero risk since he is never coming in direct contact with any secretions or areas that could have the HIV virus in them. I'm going to talk to you a little bit first about uh, timed intercourse, and then we can go on to talk about home insemination methods. Okay, great. Thank you. My doctor told me to start keeping a calendar. Perfect. So tell me what you know about what are the right times to have sex to get pregnant. Oh, that's the thing I don't know. So what my doctor said was, hey, you need, the first thing they're going to ask you is when are you having your period and you should start charting it. So my sister gave me this calendar because she's really excited for me too. And um, so here I started my period on the 10th. I wrote down the number of days I had the, my period and then the dates that we had sex. And my period comes about every month. I do know that. But I have no idea when exactly we should have sex without a condom so that I can get pregnant. Let me show you okay. this diagram of what your period is in relation to the best times to have sex without a condom to get pregnant. Okay. Your period starts here, and we call that day one, the first day of your bleeding. So for me, that's the day here I circled on my calendar. Exactly. This is my day one. Okay? Exactly. That's your day one, the first day of bleeding. On that day, this is your ovary, which is what's growing the egg. Okay. Once the egg is grown, you can see the egg here is growing, and at this point, it's released from the ovary into your body, mm. and it's ready to meet the sperm. Okay. When the egg and the sperm come together, that's when you have a baby. Okay. So how is it that I can figure out exactly when my egg is released? Great question. So there's a hormone in your body. When this hormone goes up, that's what indicates when the egg is ready to be released from your body. So if you look here, the first day of your period, this hormone is relatively at the same level in your right. body. Right at, with most women, if you have a normal 30-day cycle, mm -hmm. right around two weeks 
is when this hormone reaches its highest level, the egg is released into your body and is ready to meet the sperm and create the baby. So how can I find out when I, that hormone is the highest in my body? Have you ever heard of an ovulation testing kit? Oh, yeah, my sister mentioned that also. She told me they're in the pharmacy by the pregnancy tests, but I've never seen one and I don't know how it works. Okay, it works really similar to a pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. What it does is it measures the amount of this hormone in your body. The days when it's the highest, it indicates that you are ready to have sex that day and the next day, that those are your best, most fertile times in order to create a baby. So I'm going to have sex, unprotected sex for two days. Exactly. And this ovulation prediction kit is going to tell me. Exactly. So How let does me show work? you these kits. Okay. Like you said, you can find these kits next to... Uh, the uh, pregnancy kits in the pharmacy. There's a lot of different brands and some of them are kind of expensive. They can range from about $20 on the less expensive end to $40 on the more expensive end or more. Okay. So I, I definitely recommend that you go to a discount store or look online to see if you can find the cheapest bargain. These kits come with 20 test strips. Oh, okay, so it's not just one kit. Nope. These kits come with 20 test strips that look something like this. All right. The first thing when you wake up in the morning, you pee on this, or you can catch your pee in a little cup and dip this in a cup. Oh, okay, so similar to a pregnancy test. Very similar. All right. The times when you are most likely to be pregnant, you will see, after holding this in your pee, two lines, equally dark will show up on the strip. Okay, so t when there's two equally dark lines on the strip, that is the day that the hormone is the highest? Exactly. <clears throat> and then I'm most likely to get pregnant. So it would be that day and the next day. Exactly. Read the instructions on the box that you have because every testing kit is different. Okay. So there's 20 strips in that kit. So when am I starting and stopping this peeing on the strips? So if your period comes once a month, Six days after the first day of bleeding, you start peeing on the strip. Okay, let's use this one for an example because I am about 30 days. So I started my period on the 10th. Six days later would be the 16th. So I'm starting here, uh, my period, on the 16th, I'm going to start peeing on the strip. Exactly. And I pee on one every morning, you okay. said, until there's two equally dark lines. Right. When I have two equally dark lines, mm -hmm. that day and the next day, I have unprotected sex, and that's the most, or the times that I'm most likely to get pregnant. Exactly. Okay. Because the sperm actually can stay in your body for five days after you have sex, but the egg can only be fertilized the day that it's that it comes out of your ovary for one day more than that. So those days catch just before that egg is about to come out, and hopefully catch that window period where the sperm and the egg can meet. Okay, great. If your period comes, not every month, but let's say once every six weeks or once every two months, then you actually wait 12 days after the first day of bleeding. So it's also good to know sometimes it can take a few months of trying this mm -hmm. for it to work and for you to uh, become pregnant. Mm -hmm. So don't give up if it doesn't work the first time. Right. Um, also, my sister had told me if I didn't want to use this calendar. There's an app I can put on my phone mm -hmm. that will help me track my period mm -hmm. and my ovulation. Period tracker? Right. So I could keep track of this stuff on my phone, too. Exactly. So you can either use a calendar or you can put it on your phone to help you keep track of it. Okay, great. So thanks for all that info about um, timed intercourse. And it could be an option, but we are pretty keen on trying home insemination. Um, can you explain that to me? Sure. So with home insemination, you still want to do the ovulation predictor kit the way you would do for timed intercourse. Okay, because so I want to identify the days in which I'm ovulating. Exactly. Okay. Because those are going to be the two days of the month that you're the most likely to get pregnant. Okay. We can give you a sterile cup and a syringe. I see no needle. Good. Yeah, no needle on okay. this syringe. When you said syringe, I was like, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Your, your partner 
ejaculate into this cup, and then you pick up the ejaculation with the syringe, fill it up, and then uh, insert it into the vagina. Another option is to have sex in the way you normally do, but use a condom, and then you can use the syringe to take the semen out of the condom. Oh, so basically I want to get semen into this syringe, whether it's from the cup or from the condom. Exactly. And then I put it inside of me. Exactly. Ah, makes sense. And then there's no contact. But help me figure out, ex I'm doing that on the days I'm ovulating mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. So it would be those two days. Mm -hmm. The day that the ovulation predictor kit says that the hormone level is the highest mm -hmm. and the next day. Exactly. I would do this method. Exactly. There's a lot of different ideas about how to do this the best. I mean, it's probably good for you to be lying down. You can prop your hips up if you want on a pillow. You don't have to be upside down oh, because sperm okay. are pretty good swimmers, so they'll be able to swim up there. Okay. But um, And then lying down, you can lie down for about 30 minutes after just to make sure. Okay. Um, and make sure when you do inject the syringe, Put it as far into your vagina as possible and inject it as close to the cervix as possible okay. because that allows the sperm to, um, to get into the uterus okay. as quickly as possible. All right. Help them on their journey, To I help guess. them on their journey. Okay. Exactly. And really, to get to the cervix, you can have your partner or yourself just put the syringe as far back into your, into your vagina as possible. All right. This, is, this seems very doable. It's very doable. And I can bring these home with me. You can bring these Great, home with you. Great, thank you. And um, continue charting, and those would be the best couple of days, the, the day when the testing hits the highest, the day after, okay, to great. go ahead and try home insemination. All right, that's what we're going to try. Great. All right, thank you so much. Sure, it was a pleasure to meet All you. All right. And come back anytime. Thanks.